for all verified facts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello and welcome. The United States on July 6 said that international students might have to leave the country or risk deportation if their universities move classes entirely online in the upcoming fall semester. Now, Indians are the second largest group of international students in the United States after the Chinese. Now, on Tuesday, the United States said that modifications to student rules were temporary, the visa rules, and aimed at greater flexibility for non-immigrant students. They also said that foreign students who have taken a combination of in-person and online courses in the U.S. would be eligible for visas. Uh, and this was a clarification from the State Department. So uh, a, a notification and some clarification, but broadly still indicating that those who are predominantly online or forced to move to predominantly online would have to leave the country, possibly as a measure to ensure that universities or colleges are opened by the government. So to discuss what this means to students who are either in the US or here waiting to go, or those who've returned in the interim and maybe hoping to go back and how they're affected. I'm joined by Purvi Chotani, managing partner at LockWest, an immigration and uh, an immigration uh, law and a law uh, immigration attorneys and uh, law specialists. Thank you so much for joining us, Purvi. Hi, thank you for having me. And yes, you correctly described the three buckets of students. So that's a good start. Right. So, so what is the first bucket? So there are two kinds of visas. First, explain to us, there's an F1 visa and an M1 visa. So we're only talking about people who are affected under these categories. Correct. So the F1 visa is for people going to join academic courses at universities and M1 visas are those that are granted to study. It could be at um, academic uh, institutes or it could be at other vocational training institutes. These are for vocational training and these are the two categories that are affected by the ICE announcement. Would uh, and, and what about students who go from India? So we, I understand, have about 202,000 students from India right now. So what category would most, if not all these students be in? I, so the ones who are already counted in the two, uh, 202,000 that you talk about, they are usually a mix. They should be a mix of people who are already in the United States, um, somewhere in the middle of their education path. And the others would be here or in India or outside the, the United States because they left the country um, in, in view of COVID or because they are here for a temporary family visit. So it could be either of these two. But the third category that gets affected by this announcement is the new batch of students that are going to go to join fresh courses in August. Uh, they all need a visa. They probably don't have a visa as yet because visa issuance was suspended. So that's the third bucket of students. Right. So tell us now, uh, with this clarification that's come in, which continues to say that unless you have a fair degree of on, offline or in-university presence, then uh, you cannot come to the United States or continue in the United States. So uh, is this legally enforceable or uh, what could happen next? So the, the legal standard has always been since 2003 and then reinforced in 2012 that when you are studying in the United States, you can take one so one course up to three credit hours of online classes, but the rest have to be physical. Now for undergraduate students, uh, they have to have a 12 credit um, load every semester. And for graduate students, it has to be nine credits. So three out of these 12 or nine could be online. What the current ICE announcement has done is actually they've just reverted to their original position, which had been suspended in March to account for COVID and allowed all students to take online courses. So they've gone back to their default position just now. And they've also what uh, in their mind is a concession is that they've allowed students who have a higher online load and an in-person class load to qualify for the F1 visa or to continue to stay there on the F1 visa. What they haven't said is what the proportion would be. Right. So how does that play out then? I mean, if, if uh, for someone who's, let's talk about first uh, those people who have, uh, who are continue, who are studying or continuing to study, but may have returned to India, let's say in March as, as COVID set in. Now, right. does, does this mean that they cannot go back or, or have to leave the US if that proportion is not uh, adjusted by the university? 
That is correct. They would either have to leave the country if they are within the United States or they won't be allowed to enter if they are outside the United States. Um, all universities have been instructed to issue new form I-20, which is one of the critical documents that you need to either get a visa or travel to the United States on an F-1 visa. Most of our Indian students are on F-1 visa because they go for academic studies. So yes, they are at risk of uh, either of these two situations and new aspirants are at risk of not getting a visa unless they can prove that the online in-person proportion is compliant with the ICE requirements, with the SEBP requirements. Right. And how uh, how can they do that is because I mean, they, I'm assuming they have to then get a fresh. Uh, is that I-20 right. form the way yes. to do that? That's correct. They have to have a fresh I-20 and all the universities have to um, update their online information on the SEBP portal. That's the student exchange visa uh, program portal uh, to show what courses they're offering, how much of it is online, how much of it is in person. And then they have uh, then they will uh, uh, once they have more clear guidance on what the proportion should be. Some of those courses would uh, qualify for visas and continuous stay. Some wouldn't. So students who are in courses which have gone 100% online, these are the ones who should be really worried. They should, at this point, they should be thinking of either moving to another college or university that offers a hybrid model, which is what the ICE called it, the hybrid option. Um, or they should think of taking a gap semester and coming to India. But what that means is then their SE, uh, their CVS record gets cancelled. That gets a bit technical, but I will go with how much ever you want me to explain. No, uh, but if that happens, if the college, for instance, is in a place where, let's say, uh, COVID cases are running high, let's say it's Florida, for example, yes. and uh, and obviously, uh, you know, parents are scared, students are scared, maybe university is scared. Uh, right. Therefore, it doesn't look like things are going to resume in September. I agree with you. So in those cases, students should really think of either moving to another another state because they can in America. That's very good. You can transfer credits. You can transfer to other universities and not lose out on what you've already done. So this is the time where they should think about that. Some universities will also allow you to take your on uh, your in person classes at other universities while they do a like a credit sharing program. So there are many flexible options that students should uh, consider, but they should be proactively looking at it now and, and that's interesting that you can actually go to some other place which gives yes. you uh, a physical interaction but I guess the fear of COVID remains everywhere because it's it's an all-America phenomenon now as it is. That is correct that is correct but for example if if your university was going to give you let's say a semester abroad or something you could study in one of these smaller uh, you know locations outside the United States where it is not so uh, risky to be there because of COVID they do have a lot of flexibility but yes you've got to comply with it it the the effect of this is going to be devastating on the Indian students but I don't think what they've done is unreasonable though if you if you give it a political color then yes, it's unreasonable because again, President Trump seems to be trying to give his vote bank a message that I am putting a stop on the pipeline that takes away jobs from you because many of these students will opt for um, optional practical training, OPT, and then move on to an H-1B and so on. So if there's a political message to it, this is bad. Uh, but in terms of what the uh, ICE is trying to do, I don't think they're 100% unreasonable. Because you're saying they've only defaulted to 2012. Yes, the current position, yes. Right. Okay. So uh, last question. So as uh, as we go into September, you know, if your university is shifting to full online, you're not getting admission anywhere else, assuming you've already started that process. And I'm talking about Indian students right now. Then uh, is there any sense in staying on and uh, risking the wrath of the system? No, I would not advise that at all. I would say then it's best to get out of the country. Um, and there are two, three ways you can do it. You can take a gap semester. You can speak to the university. If you are starting a new semester or at a new university, you can ask for deferred admission. There are many ways to do it. You may lose a bit of money because they will keep their security deposits, etc. But at least you won't be a defaulter because having a removal proceeding against you, which is what deportation is now called, is not a good thing on your record. You you don't want to blemish like that because that would affect your travel to the entire world afterwards. 
Right. So, uh, so leave the country. And in any case, all this, this is temporary. At least that's what the uh, Department of Homeland Security is saying. And if, tomorrow, if in six months' time, if uh, things, even, um, things become better, then you can perhaps or potentially resume things where you left them off. So I think what the temporary part is the hybrid option. If they're going to mm -hmm. remove that temporary part, we're going to be back to our default, which is only one course or three credit hours. So I don't know whether that's going to help us stay safe from COVID. But yes, if there is no COVID or COVID is in remission, uh, the default position would kick in and uh, students could go back to university. Purvi Chodhani, thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you so much for having me and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.